Hey, what's going on guys? I just got a quick video I wanted to make about uh, the VCT solenoids and the 543 valve. Uh, this is a pretty quick video. I just kind of wanted to give you my experience replacing these and a couple of tips. So just to preface this, this may apply to the 4.6 uh, three valve and also the 6.8 V10. I don't know for sure. You really are going to have to do your own digging on that. Um, and this also, the reason I'm making this is because certain uh, parts of the 543 valve that certain uh, parts of the production run actually had like an almost easy change access hole to replace these and mine's a 2004. I don't know where that ended. I was trying to look today to, to provide that knowledge but even Tasca, uh, their website shows the same valve cover used through a part all the way across. So I, I don't know, maybe they don't even know and they've got a wrong diagram on there, I'm not sure. So anyways, so this is the solenoid. This is a Dorman model. I replaced this about eight years ago in my truck. And so I had learned that parts of the timing system over the past couple of years have actually been revised by Ford. You're seeing a, like Fortech Maculoco, he went through and he showed the roller followers and lash adjusters, and he showed in the lash adjusters how the, the uh, oil passage has actually been reduced in diameter. And the theory behind that is obviously oil pressure. If you have a hose and you have water coming through it, it's kind of lazily coming out. But if you put your thumb over the edge of the hose and you block off some of that uh, opening, you have the same volume of water that's trying to get out of that hose, but you've reduced the diameter. And as you know, it's going to go farther and it's going to have more intensity because you've raised the water pressure at the outlet. And so the same goes for some of these components. Now I had read that the VCT solenoids were even up uh, revised since I had put them in, which again, it's been almost a decade, it's understandable. And so I'll show you a comparison. So this is the oil passage here. The solenoid helps control the oil flow through here in regards to the phaser and what it's commanding for the variable cam timing. And so this hole here is actually reduced in diameter on the new solenoid. So my point is, if you have one of those valve covers that you can actually access these with ease, then I think it's pretty reasonable to go ahead and replace them if yours are original. Because there's about $200 to get two OEM solenoids along with two OEM valve cover seals for them. And I got this off Amazon, I'll link it down below. But I think it's worthwhile because at the very least you're getting a little bit of extra oil pressure, which is what we all need in these engines because that's their biggest issue, right? So I thought for $200 is worth making sure I had a Ford part in there at this point and it's obviously revised so it's going to supersede you know, what was in there before anyway. So I just got a couple of little tips I want to share in regards to the removal and installation. So on this seal you're going to see a large tab at the top and what remains of a smaller t uh, tab here. And the reason there's remnants there is because these are actually set in the valve cover in like, it's got like a little ridge where this sits in and kind of bottoms out. And so it's not easy to pull them out and that makes sense because you don't want them blowing out of the valve cover, having oil everywhere, contaminants getting into your valve train. Next thing you know, boom, new engine. So we don't want that. So it, that's understandable why these are a bit of a bear. So my tip on this, is usually, at least on my engine, the way the valve cover is designed is on both sides, the little tab is what is most accessible for you to pry at. So what I did was I used a flat blade screwdriver and just kind of worked my way around trying to get this to kind of uh, break its seal with its uh, valve cover ridge, I guess that's what I'm gonna call it, where it kind of sits in. And then when I finally got enough of it pulled out, I was able to take needle nose vice grips and just start to pry and then eventually pulled it right out. This is like a plasticky rubber coated um, metal seal. So you can see there's bits of metal. If this thing will focus, you can see that there's bits of metal that are protruding because 
that's what that seal has internally. It's got metal in there. So it's gonna, it's very stiff and you're gonna have to pry it. And unfortunately, I wish I could give you, you know, the surefire way to get it off, but you're honestly just gonna have to take your time working around it and then ultimately trying to pull it out. And I had good luck on both sides using vice grips uh, that were needle nose. The other tip I wanna give you is actually the Torx screw. And I believe this is 27, a 27 Torx right here. And so on these valve covers where you actually can access it without pulling the cover, you're gonna see this down in your engine. So this will be protruding from the valve cover and then you look down and you're gonna have to kind of make sure you have a long handle 27 and start to unscrew this. Now what I would suggest is actually pulling the solenoid out as you are unwinding this. And the reason being is in theory, these screws should not be able to back out of this mounting tab. But guess what? Now this could, it does, and this is a Dorman model. So it's kind of one of those things where looking back, I should have done Dorman. I mean, I'm, I should have done Motorcraft, but I don't know if this is something that is also an issue with the Motorcraft ones. I can tell you on the revised part number, it definitely was not an issue and this thing was not gonna unwind out, but you just wanna play it safe. So if this came out, it would be down in your valve cover and it's be very, very difficult to get this out and likely you would have to pull the cover off, which is not easy because as you see in those, if you've watched any of those timing videos, depending on what side it happens on, it is not easy to get at that, that all the you know valve cover bolts and get it off without a headache of AC lines and all that stuff. So be safe make sure you're pulling the solenoid out and make sure you have a long handle uh, 27 torque so you can actually unwind it and just continue to pull this out. And as once this thing is unscrewed from its um, hole, it just pulls right out and you take everything with you and you're not worried about dropping this little bolt. So I've driven a little bit with the new solenoids. Engine does sound a little quieter. Admittedly, I don't have all those ta uh, like dieseling sounds and bad drive ability that a lot of these people have. And again, I just, I've maintained my truck so well over the years. I'm, all, I'm the second owner. I've owned it for a hundred thousand miles and 13 years. So it's only ever had motorcraft stuff other than this. And I, I, I just don't have all those noises. The only one I do have is a little bit when it's hot, I'll get like a light tapping at low RPM, which does sound like it's the phaser. And very once in a while, if the truck's been truly sitting for quite some time, because I don't daily drive it anymore, uh, it's more of a fun vehicle, um, I'll get that startup rattle. So eventually a timing set and everything, an oil pump and all that stuff is gonna be in my future. But for right now, I figured I would just try this and the engine does seem quieter. Um, and I think that goes back to the, the oil passage. I think having the smaller oil passage is gonna increase your oil pressure, it can only help. All right, so this is the passenger side valve cover on my 463 valve in the Mustang. And as you can see, this is a pretty small seal. This is the VCT solenoid, it's the same on the other side. This side's just easier to show. And as you can see, it's very small. So there's no way that you're gonna get this seal off to access the, the screw inside. So this is an example of a model year that does not have the easy change VCT solenoid. So in order to do this, you'd actually have to pull the whole valve cover off and take you know different things off to actually access this. So if your truck looks like this, you're not gonna be able to change the solenoids without pulling the valve covers. And at that point, I'd say I'd just wait until I did a timing job. But I will show you this. One tip, just pretend that this is one of the seals so when you go to reinstall the seal, you're gonna need it to seat down into the valve cover. So what I did was I took an extension along, this is a half inch extension. And so I set, I seated and just sat the valve, um, the VCT seal right in after I had installed the solenoid. And then what I did is I just put the extension on the edge and just went around with a rubber mallet, tapping this end, and I just worked my way around the seal and just did it so that it would evenly seat 
because if you use a flat blade screwdriver, you're gonna risk indenting the seal and possibly splitting it or damaging it. It's not worth it. So I, you could use a dowel, but I chose to use an extension and just work my way all the way around and it worked great. So like I said, if you have the easy change valve cover where it's got the larger opening for that large seal, unlike as you saw on my Mustang, I'd recommend go ahead and doing it if you have the couple hundred dollars you know you can throw at it. I've truthfully never pulled a valve cover. I'm not really at that point yet. I wouldn't do it where I live right now. I'm trying to wait till I buy a house to decide on the timing system and then I'll probably tackle it myself at that point. Um, but to be honest, for $200 to put a revised part in it and to potentially get some more oil pressure because again, the opening's you know considerably smaller. I think that's kind of a no brainer if you've got the cash line around and you can go ahead and do that and maybe it'll take care of you know a little bit of tapping or any sort of issue because if you read on these, some people have had success changing them out. Um, but that's it guys, hope you enjoyed that. If there's any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. But for now, take care. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.